everybody. Enjoy and welcome to episode 2000 of TMS. It begins in three, two, one. I'm Al Eisen. I invented an automatic toilet bowl cleaner called 2000 Flushes. Because cleaning the toilet is a lousy job, nobody likes it. So I made 2000 Flushes so you wouldn't have to do it. Here's how it works. We use chlorine bleach. That's the chemical that's used in swimming pools to help keep the water sparkling and the sides clean. It works the same in your toilet bowl. It really does. I am... Partial to the macaroon. It's the show that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs. This is the morning stream. Hello, everybody, and welcome back or to the TMS show. That's the morning stream. 2,000 mm-hmm. episodes, Brian. Two, Two. triple zero. 2,000. Look at all those zeros. It just falling off the end of that two. It just look blah. That. Oh, Take look at this. that. Those of you who thought we'd never make it past 500. Yeah, you thought we'd fade by we now are. or that we were too much right. of a legacy podcast. Or I guess this right. makes us more legacy than ever. But uh, yeah, exactly. look, I got the, the TMS 2000 mug here. It says... Uh, the morning stream 2000 plus estimated 20 or estimated established 2011 on the back i can definitely see why you like it yeah see that guys nice by the way um i don't know if we've already done this or if it's if it's even happening if it's happening help it's help it's happening um i want to buy one of these mugs or is it too late for me to buy another one of these mugs are there any of these mugs left i think they may be gone but i I don't know. We, there's been talk of a second run because enough people are showing interest in, okay. and that they were late. So I'll find out. Because I'd want to buy one for the woman who coined that phrase. Oh yeah, right. Send her a little care package. That's a great exactly. idea. Exactly. Yes. Just because she, <laughs> oh, we don't man. know if she has any idea if. Uh... <laughs> I, I would hope her. So if her husband still listens, we just don't know. We have no way of verifying. Actually, yeah. we do have a way of verifying this. Can you email us, husband of lady, and tell us? <laughs> <laughs> if she husband of lady husband of lady and let us know if she if this, if she if you're still listening number one number number two get me an address we'll work this out we'll it find is, a way it is kind of funny and i'm i'm just as guilty of this i mean it, it, you know uh that we don't even know the name of the woman who coined the phrase that we use on this show nope. on a regular basis no nope, we have no idea like all good memes <laughs> the originator sometimes gets no credit yeah we're I happy know. to give her credit. Uh, real quick here, I have, this is going to freak everybody out, but I actually have a, uh, a brand of, co- a taste of coffee I can handle. Uh, a this taste is, of coffee. This is, uh, let's see, uh, I can definitely see why you like it. Uh, 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 I'm trying to come up with a way of using that catchphrase and I can't do it. So never mind. I'm just going to say, <laughs> I finally, I think I found a taste I like. This came, of course, from our friends at Kahawa, Kahawa Roasting Company. Yeah. Which we've talked about a whole bunch of other times at kahawaroasting.com. I didn't mention this, though, and I feel bad I didn't mention it yet because this is important. If you go buy their coffee and you use uh, Morning Stream at checkout, you get 20% off your first purchase. That's pretty good. Ooh, that's super cool. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Uh, also, check this out. Hold on. I'm going to read this bit here. Uh, da, 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 da. Here it is. I love this. Our goal is not okay. to simply make money. It is to help support our refugee neighbors. We pay livable wages. And we grow, uh, or sorry, and as we grow, we will prioritize full time employment with benefits over part time employment. We want uh, our employees to, able, to be able to support themselves and their families from their wages at Kahawa Roasting Company. At the time, uh, let's see, we are trying to develop future business owners. We'll be working toward offering smaller business loans as, uh, sorry, as well as donating to other refugee organizations. The entire thing is set up around helping refugees get their feet on the ground. Get jobs, get established, you know, all which that stuff. Awesome. Which is awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. So use Morning Stream at checkout, get 20% off at Kahawa. Kahawa. Dude, yes. my Echo thinks I'm talking to her. Shut up. <laughs> none of that sounded like the A word, did it? No, no, none of it did. Shh. None of it. What a load. Jeez. All right. Jeez. Anyway, happy 2000. That's about as much celebration as you're going to get. I made a special. Almost. Uh, 2000 flushes intro that's that was on purpose <laughs> oh, duh yeah i did not even make that connection that that's why you played the 2000 flushes intro oh, i thought you'd oh, get that right sake, away why did i even catch that yeah i thought you'd get that right away 2000 flushes it's right it really works 
Uh, so there's that. And then, For the 2000 and first flush with that product, does it just shoot urine at your face? Like, cause oh, you, yeah. you, you yeah. didn't keep count? Yeah, it's like, it's like uh, just like if you don't, you know, it's like that day after you forgot warranty, to put in chlorine. The day after the warranty. Yeah, there you breaks, go. Yeah, yeah, everything exactly. breaks. Just pee, pee for miles. Uh, all right. Had some weird stuff happen yesterday. Kind of a weird day. Oh, no. Not a great day. Yeah, yeah. Show ended. The show was fine. I was cranky in the morning. Hopefully it didn't show on the show. I was talking to Brian about that. Sometimes you don't know if your crankiness is coming off on the show or not. <laughs> and uh, Anyway, but that was fine. Show went well. Did good. Whatever. Posted it. Got it up. And then get this frantic phone call from my daughter who says somebody broke. Well, okay. So it's it's all it's all evolved a little bit over time as, as we've learned what actually happened. Um, and if anything, I'm, I'm a little happier about the end result now than I was. Um, but originally, it looked like what somebody had done is shattered her rear window of her car. Uh, the only survivor of that event, by the way, being a horde oh, sticker. The horde, the horde sticker, which yeah. looks great. And somebody suggested like framing that, which I absolutely concur. Like you just got to mount that on a on a board, put a frame around it. That's what I said. Kind of, kind of cool. Yeah, they've got. They, I think they still have it. So I'm gonna see what I can do. But it's looking unless at, it's too much it. of a reminder that it's like, oh yeah, I don't want to be reminded of this crap event. It's pretty arty though. I like it. It is. Um, it totally is. So anyway, there's that, and uh, that's the only thing that really survived the back windshield. Everything else shattered and destroyed. Baby seat just covered in glass. Uh, <sighs> this is awful, right? That's yeah. the car Taylor drives, and then. Uh, Dylan's got his old Honda, uh, which they also got into, but they didn't take anything. And they didn't shatter anything to do it. They just popped the, I think they just Jimmy uh, did the Jimmy stick. Or what's that called? Uh, yeah, Slim Jim. Slim Jim. <laughs> Snapped into a Slim Jim. Did the Slim the Jimmy, Jimmy stick. stick. Little yeah. Jimmy stick. Yeah, tell the cop to bring a Jimmy stick. We need to get into our Jimmy's car. Jimmy's been eyeing your car. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy doesn't so, like it when you're right So, there. uh... Nick and and Tay parked. So uh, are they close enough together that it's Nick? Like oh, uh, you mean place? Dylan? Yeah, Dylan and Taylor. So okay. Or so, Dylan. Oh, okay. I thought you said Nick. You did say Dylan, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. So out in front of their house, Taylor's house. It's like a they live in a uh, like a townhome. Mm-hmm. They have uh, her, her garage currently is like her photo studio. So they do a lot of internal photo shots. All those family photos they put up last week mm-hmm. were from oh, looked that. great, by the way. Those yeah. are awesome. That's from that space because she's got these big backdrops in there and the lighting and everything. So she's been using that as a studio and she's been doing, she works for a local fashion magazine thing and does fashion mm-hmm. shoots there and stuff. So, so it's kind of been lately anyway, all set up. So the cars can't go in there. So they've had to park out in the driveway and they were parked, you're right, side by side. And uh, this happened like at 2-something in the morning. And uh, they go out and they find it all. Anyway, they thought what had happened is that they had broken in to steal a bunch of stuff. Now the story, not the story hasn't changed, but what, what has come out since then is now up to something like 40 cars mm. in the same night, all had the same damage. They think what happened is nothing, because nothing seems to be stolen anywhere. Yeah, it's kids running around with a hammer, just smashing windows. God, I know, I know. It makes and, me want to kill and, someone. Uh, for like forty cars, and they didn't get caught is the crazy thing. Like, that is the crazy that thing. That was... You think it'd be loud enough, or enough ring cameras caught it, or you know, right? All exactly. That sort of thing. So, and maybe they are. They may be close to right. Getting maybe them. yeah, exactly. Maybe somebody's got it on their ring cam, and they can. Yeah. So street punks, really. Uh, <sighs> And they're probably, yeah. you know, high school a hole, whatever. This high school out there just got closed down because of a bunch of COVID stuff, and so they're bored and want to mm-hmm. go tr- cause trouble. I don't know. So uh, anyway, that's good in the sense that nobody got robbed. It's bad because vandalism sucks, and everyone's got five hundred dollar mm-hmm. deductibles, and it might be cheaper and less ex- less. Maybe it was maybe it was a local insurance agent. <laughs> Got a guy in a suit out there just going tap 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 tap. tap, tap. <laughs> exactly. You never know. Um, but then a business card tucked <laughs> under every windshield. It turns out, so it turns out this the smash and run only happened to her car, and they didn't actually do anything to Dylan's car. What turned out to have happened there is we thought they jimmy sticked it, mm-hmm. but he thinks now he just forgot to lock it. Oh, but they did, but nothing whoops. happened. They didn't get in there or yeah. do anything. But they assumed since it was open, oh, they broke in here too. But really, it was him just forgetting to lock the door. 
So, so what? How did they? So how did he know they'd been in the car? Did they leave the door open, or what? Um, nah, that's if they a good didn't question. smash anything or take anything, that's a good question. All I know is that he thinks he left the door open, which explains why it was or not open but unlocked, which explains yeah. why maybe they just yanked it, or who knows. But they maybe they messed around some stuff, and then now all of a sudden Dylan's a person of interest. Yeah, now now he's on their radar. It's a little right, right a little uh, shady. Yeah. Good cop, bad cop. Let's get that light on him. Let's do it. <laughs> That's right. So uh, it's not a huge deal in terms. of, I mean, replacing that thing's about six hundred bucks. Insurance deductible is about five hundred. If you yeah. do the insurance, it's going to cost five hundred plus. Is going to make your rates go up. So they're inclined to just do the 600 and eat it. Oh, I know God, it sucks, sucks, dude. Insurance in this, I know yeah. that we're, so there's a, what is it? A no fault state or whatever where your mm -hmm. state, um, here's how it should work in my opinion. If you buy insurance for something and the thing that goes wrong, someone else did. Mm -hmm. So let's say, okay, I got car insurance, all paid up, paying regular, got my premiums going. And if I cause an accident, that's why I paid insurance, because I'm liable for that. I need to be able to cover it for the other person. Right. If somebody comes by and smashes a window with a hammer, I don't think your insurance rates should go up, because it's the guy with the hammer, not you. It had nothing to do right. with you, and you're not at any greater right. risk of hammer smashing. It's not like you're a magnet for hammer smashers now. Right, exactly. That's no. so effed up. So effed uh, up. And it depends on the up. state. It depends on the uh, a lot of things, right? I know that. But here... Her rates would go up if she does the insurance. Well, AV Tech John says that's a comprehensive claim and it won't cause your rates to increase, says Anne Marie Thomas, senior manager of partner relationships for rate comparison site Insurance Hotline. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, I, no kidding. I, I thought I had to do well, with what state you were in and what. what there were yeah, limits on where too. you lived. I could be wrong about that. So I'd, I'd at least find out. I mean, $100 versus $600, obviously. You know, well, and Dylan hurt. works for State Farm, so he should oh. be able to find. Oh, this. he should know for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, maybe now he's a bigger person of interest. We found the connection. He's trying. To yes. Oh, so wait, Dylan mm -hmm. works in insurance. Well, mm -hmm. uh, hold on a second. Now this is all coming together. Why did you ask me to borrow that hammer last Friday, Dylan? That's right. David Caruso just ripped off his glasses. I think he's got it figured out. <laughs> you hear the music and everything. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was fun. It sucked, and we hated it, but the Horde sticker survived. I don't know what that means, but uh, it means four more months of winter or something. Uh, <laughs> That's what it means, yes. <laughs> Thrall size Correct. shadow, so get, we hunker down, everybody. All right, uh, that was that. We're going we're gonna to do a weird thing this morning that we don't normally do, but because it's a festive day uh, of sorts, festive. we're going we're gonna to bring in somebody. And yeah. They have some words to say. And so to to do it though, uh, we got to do this right. Hold on, I should have done this earlier. Let's see. Uh, uh, I want to have a proper introduction here. Okay. And, uh, let's do it here. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, I found it. All right. So we're gonna to to set this off. Here's your intro. I've moved Catwoman. There you go, everybody. It's Randy <laughs> Jordan joins us this morning on episode Yay! two thousand. He says he has some words to share with us. Happy Randy, good 2000! Oh, wow. Thanks. Look at you freaking out over there. That's great. Thanks for that. Yes. Congratulations. You've done it. Yeah, You've we made did history. it. We did it. We, we can stop now. We've done it. We've yeah. accomplished You've done it. it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, That's it. Uh, actually, you have to do one tomorrow so that you can you can be uh, the morning stream to Space Odyssey. You have to. Oh. <laughs> well, and then of that. course we need to make sure we get to 2020, so because it's the year the episode we make contact. Right. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. Yeah. So that's only this is just it keeps weeks. going. Yeah. Like, this only, is, that'll only take us like what, two you. weeks, two and a half weeks to be to 2020, something like that. You have to make 2049. Then you have to make 20. Oh, yeah. 99 is a huge episode that Marvel covered all through the 90s. Yeah. That's right. Uh, it just keeps going. Yeah. Um, let me tell you some other history. 420 years ago today, yeah. the first opera that has survived to be recorded in history received its pr premiere performance. That show was Eurydice by uh, Jacopo Perry. Uh -huh. Its performance in Florence is considered the beginning of the Baroque period. G guys... That that's history. You you are Four, here. Four twenty. Right you said. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Blazing yeah. Up. And and let's. I mean, if it ain't baroque, don't fix it, right? Yeah. No. Um, oh wow. Um, I I wanted hey, to Dad. give you. I wanted to give you two. 
I want to give you two other two other pieces of history that are right on today. Right. Uh, the first planet orbiting another sun was discovered 25 years ago today. Did you know that? No, I didn't what know that. What's, what's yeah, it was it was initially named 51 Pegasi B, but they changed its name to the formal name Dimidium. Oh, geez. All Dimidium. right, Dimidium. That sounds yeah. like a fake thing. Okay. I'm I'm trying to get out of the hands of the the Navi when I go to their planet. <laughs> right. Today yeah. is also the tenth. Uh, birthday, the tenth anniversary of the founding of Instagram. Whoa! That, really? Yeah, yeah. Ten wow. years old today. Ten years old today. Wow, wow that's right. crazy. Uh, isn't it also? Oh no, that was yesterday. Steve Jobs died nine years ago yesterday. That's well, a, that's sad. That's yeah. sad. Instagram <laughs> killed him. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> uh, anyway, I just wanted to, I just wanted to, uh, to congratulate you too. Oh. Um, in in early twenty eleven. Yeah, I I was uh, sort of wrapping up my time on the instance with Scott. It was it was the the like the biggest thing going on in Frog Pants at the time. Yeah, and he and I had been doing this for like five years together, and it was it was taking me a lot of time. Like as a, with each passing week, I was putting more and more time into prepping the show, and it was like. Uh, Scott needed a variety show because like I was coming along and saying let's start the the instance with this sketch and I've written this whole skit and you need to record these lines and it was like it was becoming this thing that you know was like unsustainable and it was unsustainable because of the way Scott works Scott is a comic artist mm. Scott Scott believes that your work should be putting pen to paper and seeing what happens not uh, writing out an entire script for a one and a half hour long podcast, <laughs> and so, uh, so Scott, and, Scott, and Scott's like, you know, I think I'm gonna try, I'm try to do this daily thing. I'm gonna do something five days a week, and I want it to be like really loose and variety, and not that you know that huge plan where you have to sit down and write a whole script and everything. And I'm just like. Good for you. Good luck, buddy. I yeah. I, I wish you the best. I, I you know, that sounds like something I can't uh, commit to. And Scott was like, you know, I have this great idea. And this I swear to God, this is what he told me in early February 2011. He's like, I have this great idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have this morning show every morning, and I'm going to have another person, but it's going to be a different person every day. And so in my mind, I'm just thinking of them as like the guy in the booth. Like it's whoever whoever can, <laughs> can show up. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And I'm thinking in the back of my head. Now, remember what I just said about Scott being a comic artist. Uh, who's going to produce this thing? Like hey, Scott's not going to schedule a different person every day mm. for the next month and remind them and all this stuff. Like it just didn't make sense to me. And I was just like, okay, all right, good luck. And then he found Brian Ibbett. And it was like such the perfect, like this match made in heaven for a concept. Mm. And I just love that. I love that right, like right before he kicked this thing off, right before he put pen to paper and started drawing and seeing what would happen, you came along, Brian, and you just made it exactly what it needed to be. Oh, and it, I, like, did, man, I, I did come along a lot earlier because of that. <laughs> <Ben Sack>. Yeah, <laughs> well, for sure. I love but this idea that you just showed up. Kelly Clarkson yeah. didn't just turn her chair around and discover me in uh, <laughs> late January. <laughs> the The concept was uh, was so loose, you know, yeah. and to to see what uh, what it became like from the first episode. What mm. what this show has been, it's just uh, it's just mind blowing to me because Aww. I mean I'm not saying I di I dismissed it outright. I'm just saying that I. <laughs> And in when it was in the conceptual stages, I thought, "Oh, this is going to be interesting." I have no idea what's going to happen. Well, I just like, the, yeah. what what could this become? You're not wrong. And, and a lot of people were in a similar boat where they just said, "Is that even sustainable? Can you do that every mm -hmm. day?" Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, "I don't know, but I'm going to try." And um, I'm going to try it with Brian Ibbett, and we're going to see if we can do this together. And we figured out a way to do it. And I feel like we've done enough episodes. Two thousand episodes is enough to say. Yeah, I think we figured out a way mm -hmm. to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think we got it. We get, we figured it we out. We got this. We can yeah. now write the book. How <laughs> to create, how to do a show for, in yeah. your basement for 2,000 episodes. Right. How to and, make a thing that potentially could go on until we're dead. You know, like what kind of show? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Nobody and, does and it's that in podcasting. You, it's because so. you simplified it, you came up with, uh, you came up with a way to do this. You know, like we couldn't, we couldn't really change uh, uh, film sack. We mm. couldn't change that. Mm. We we have a certain amount of time that's required to prep for that show every week, right? right. We all have to watch a movie. We have to make notes. Right. Scott has to catch right. a clip. All this, like, like that is just how film sack works. And it wouldn't surprise me if at some point we say, "Okay, guys, like a thousand episodes is all we can do. Like it'll it'll eventually run its course." 
or whatever it is. Yeah. But man, this I could I could see. I could seriously, I could see five thousand episodes of of the morning stream and still going strong. I'm wow. so excited for All you right. guys. That'd be twenty Aww. something years of this show. That would be imagine that for a second. Holy shit! Yeah. Holy so let's shmack. see. Okay. So it took us uh, almost ten years to do two thousand shows. Yeah. So yeah, we'd be looking at. What, did you say another thirty years of this? Another twenty? Uh, no, another. If you said five thousand, it'd be yeah. Uh, another, oh, oh, right, right, right. Yes. Another, so five years. Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Right. Yeah. Fifteen years. Ah, we this. can do that. We got that. Five years per thousand, yes. I yeah. believe in you, and that's what I'm here to say. <laughs> Congratulations. I believe in you. I love you guys. I'm so glad for you. Oh, uh, thanks, and, man. Uh, and now I've got to go, literally, this is uh, this is not me making something up. Now I've got to go to a parent-teacher conference that is happening in 13 minutes. Oh, good <laughs> Lord. Oh, wow. Is it okay. a screen one, like a Zoomy one? Is that the deal? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that weird? It is weird. Like, yeah. Yeah. like just to, like our our, t our kids teacher is having these conferences all day every day just imagine him every 15 minutes flipping to another zoom link yeah and the mm. people on the other end are having problems figuring out how to make their yeah, speakers uh, work well <laughs> hopefully like i mean hopefully they've been using the, they're just using the same zoom link that the kids are using for school if yeah, but each, if each kid's home has a different setup that's what i'm uh -oh. saying they're, yes. they're having to troubleshoot their way through every there you go. Every setup. We'll have, have fun with that, and, and and good luck with it. Hopefully, uh, it's uh, easy and uh, not a problem on your end. It shouldn't be. You're you're smart, uh, visual audio guy. You got this. Yeah. So, uh, uh, talk to you talk to you guys on Saturday for our next uh, film sack. Really, really excited. This old movie called The Car. So there you the go. Car. It's Randy Jordan, aka Randy Deluxe. You can find him on Twitter, and you'll see him sometime when when Brian Dunaway bows out. So watch for that. <laughs> see, see you later. Randy. Bye now. Oh, every I forgot time, to play this. Every time we say the guy. name of the movie. Is it, oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, every time we, we say the name of the movie, The Car, all I can think of is uh, the the one of the uh, agents, is he FBI agent? I can't remember if he's like a special forces or FBI agent in uh, Die Hard. who's saying, bring out the car. The car? The car. Oh, it was one of the Johnsons, right? Um, no, it was, it was one of the guys before they... Bring in the uh, bring in the FBI agents before oh, the Johnsons. Was it Principal um... SWAT Commander? He was a SWAT Commander. Oh, okay. But he was bring talking to car. he was talking to Principal Weiner or whatever his name is. He was, uh, well, he was talking to whoever's driving the car. Oh, the car. Well, wait, who's the who's? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that. You're right. That's who says it. He's a yeah, nobody though. We don't know. Because then the car turns out to be like just basically a big target and blows up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they blew it out of the last about last about two minutes. They, Captain, they immediately over the shoulder freaking RPG that thing. Done out. <laughs> That's uh, all right. Well, we're we're two thousand years old. Thanks everybody. We appreciate it. <laughs> and that's the end of this show. We're done. Today's the announcement. We're done. We're yeah, out. Sorry. Okay. There won't be a 2001. Not actually true. In fact, I want to give a special shout out to Free Rangers, who's always in the chat or quite often in the chat. I don't think he is today though. I don't see him. Uh, oh. or I haven't seen him. Free Rangers, if you're in the chat, say something. Uh, if you're not, that's cool. Hopefully you hear this. Oh, oh he is here. there. There he awesome. is right there. I just want to tip tip of the hat and a smile right back to Free Rangers because he picked uh, he he uh, took my challenge. Okay, basically here's the deal. Okay. Not really a giant fan of Japanese RPGs. Not because mm. they aren't good, mm -hmm. but because I usually don't get my head around the anime business. And the whole, uh, like, just the constant, like, you know. <laughs> Give me an example. I mean, you like, like, talking Persona 5 or something like that? Yeah, perso mean, or, the Persona games are, are hard for me. Uh, yeah. A lot of Final Fantasy is hard for me. Like, just JRPGs in general. I like turn-based combat. I love uh, structurally how they work typically. But the stories are hard for me to get around. It's always some mm -hmm. angsty teenager kid who has to save the world. And there's always a lot of dialogue like, oh, what did you come here for? Mm. Uh -huh. What are you what are you talking about? What are you looking at me for? <laughs> like it's just a lot of that, right? It's just not my jam. And I yeah. and there's some anime yeah. I really enjoy out there, folks. I like Paprika and freaking Ghost in the Shell. I really like, and I love Akira. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Akira's great, and I loved uh, um, uh, Cowboy Bebop's amazing. I'd watch mm. that three times over. I loved it so much. So it's not like I'm coming at this like a total noob or anything. It's just some of it mm. drives me up a wall. And most of the time, I have to admit, it's how they treat or it's how they it's how they portray uh, female protagonists in their games are mm. often just so. Eh. <laughs> I don't know. I can't even. <laughs> so anyway, uh, 
he took me up on this challenge where I've always been slightly tempted to pick up the game Near Automata, which mm. came out in 2018. And uh, right now they have a definitive or like to- absolute edition or whatever it's called on Steam. And it was down to like 19 bucks. And I thought, oh, maybe I should finally pick that up because the setting looks cool. It's like uber future, like 5000 AD or something. Like it's way in the future. The world's all blown to crap, which I love. And uh, robots and, and ancient stuff and tech stuff and androids and all this. And it seemed like kind of like maybe me and everyone said it was good. And I'm like, well, maybe I should maybe poke my head in. Anyway, mm-hmm. out of nowhere, Free Ranger sends me a gift copy of that thing. And guess what, Free Rangers? I really like it. <laughs> it's good. Very cool. Yeah, and it was just a nice thing for him to do. So anyway, I just want to say thanks to Free Rangers for for putting me onto it because it, it turns out it is kind of my jam. You know, it's like, here, here's what I would compare it to. Sure. Like Zelda games are often also very Japanese-y, Right. Mm-hmm. And and have some tropey stuff in there that's that borders sure. on some of the you know on anime tropes and big eyes and uh, and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I do like that. That's your your definition. It's uh-huh. it's apt. Uh-huh. And they do this yeah. a lot in this game, by the way. Um, every time somebody gets surprised, they go. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, come on, stop. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. so so this is more akin to that end of the gaming spectrum, and structurally, it feels like. It's not. It's not structurally a Zelda game. There's leveling up, and there's you know, there's quests, and there's, there's stuff that makes it different. But, but I'm feeling that that end of the spectrum, and that is what I. Want. Turns out, it's exactly what I wanted. So while I was trying to get my head around Nino Cooney two and wishing I was dead, or playing that other one, I forgot the name of. I, you know, I was struggled. I'm on like I want to enjoy these the way you people do. Yeah. Yeah. And then Free Ranger swooped in and said, "Hey, maybe you'll like this," and I said. Indeed, I do. So, just a big thanks to the Free Rangers. Thanks for that. Man. Super cool. No, really nice um, I keep hearing great things, and I think you even talked a little bit about it. The uh, uh, Ghosts of Tsushima, Tsushima, Tsushima. Yeah, that's a very good game. Yeah, and that's not that's not typical of this, right? That's no, a whole no. different kind this of. This is a Western uh, developed game about samurais and sort okay. of ninja stuff. So, okay, cool. So it's more like they took a um, Miyazaki or not Miyazaki uh, who made Seven Samurai I can't think of his name all of a oh Kurosawa it's Akira like a Kurosawa, Kurosawa movie it's it's like a giant Kurosawa oh really okay uh, thing it's it's very Epic. much in that vein yeah. of sort of uh, you know even it's, it even feels like a western in a lot of ways that's a very cool game PlayStation only okay yeah um, a lot of people have recommended it. I might I might uh, might be ready to move I never finished I uh, didn't finish titanfall because i switched to avengers now i gotta finish avengers before i do anything else yeah and you should finish titanfall it's amazing gonna do that I story finish titanfall. by the way uh big thanks to uh ba, 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 ba. fred the dorfman he sent us a link to the video of send in the car oh nice did he it's in, it's in our discord yes oh look at this hold on let's 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 hear this so, here, here. Send oh. In the car. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's really quiet though. Jeez. It's yeah. Like very low. Well, doesn't he say it twice? Play, well, play does he say it again? Send in the car. Wait, let's do it twice. Send in the car. How can we? Wait. Send in the car. Send in the car. Oh, I love it, dude. <laughs> Send, in Send in the car. Send in the car. Send in the car. I forgot about that guy. All right. Yeah, he was talking to Principal Wienerhead over there yes well he was talking to whoever was driving the car but he was talking next to principal wienerhead yeah that's true I'll give you that i'll give you that yeah give me that at least give me that um I'll but anyway the, uh, uh, i was gonna say one other thing <laughs> and i forgot what it was what was it don't remember and that's okay if i don't remember uh anything. anime uh thanks to free rangers Ooh. and uh i can't think of it in the new game don't know what it was i guess that's okay it. Right. i don't know what i was thinking of but anyway it's scratching an itch Cool. And, and uh, F you, Patrick, who thought I would hate it. Patrick thought I would hate it. He was sure of oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. But I think it's because he hated it, and so he thinks everyone should hate things <laughs> that he hates. But Patrick liked uh, the Avengers, and not a lot of people liked the Avengers, the Avengers game. Yeah, that's true. So never... A lot of people did not feel like that was a party. He's a... <laughs> By the way, I at least once or twice a day... Get uh-huh. someone sending me that gif of her saying that, saying, hey, it's your favorite scene in Avengers. Every day. 
Every day. Oh, maybe that could stop. Where's she going? <laughs> I don't see how that's a party. <laughs> I do hate it. I really, truly do. Okay, time for news, everybody. We got to get the news out because how do we inform the public if we don't? So right. he- here it is. I don't watch the news. It's time for the news brought to you by... The Fred and Can comic, available every Monday at fredandcan.com. Live out your fantasy of what it might be like to live in an apartment with a sentient can of expired cream corn today. That's fredandcan.com. Yep, go check it out. Yesterday's episode went up. Uh, Fred's an idiot. He's going to get audited. You'll learn how. (laughs) Yes, he is. (laughs) He couldn't be more stupid. Uh, Lying on his taxes. Ah, well, I mean, he, he thinks it's true. He thinks it's true. He thinks it's true. Maybe it's true. Anyway, that's there for your entertainment. Go check it out, fredandcan.com. Okay. Let's talk to, uh, or let's read this thing. We got this from Martin sent this in. I want to give Martin some credit. Mm, Love yeah. it when you guys submit stories if they're good and they like fit the show's you know weird format of news. We're we, happy to. And we to hate know. it when you send stories if they're bad. Yeah, we don't like that. <laughs> used, like use that used condom story? Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Back down. We anyway. We talked about it, though. Check this out. A kitten that looks like Baby Yoda was rescued from a California wildfire. Oh, This is adorable. Um, oh, I should put it up. Uh, I meant to he do does kind of look like Baby Yoda. Do you think it's I mean, enough like it to make it worth saying it's it? Just, a... It's a cat that has... The fact is that he's he's got his ears kind of off to the side is, yeah. is what... Um, That's all it is, isn't it? It kind of is, yeah. There's no giant eyeballs. There's no... It's just a cat. <laughs> hey you guys, check it out. We got a cat. Kind of looks like Baby Yoda. Kind of but... looks like Baby Yoda, but the fact that the fact that uh, you know this cat was rescued from a California wire, wildfire. You can say whatever you want about how it looks. I'm glad he was glad he was rescued. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, that's says, the, that's the takeaway. Says here, uh, the force must have been with the kitten rescued in North Northern California during a fire, as the feline bears a striking resemblance <clears throat> to that of Baby Yoda. Firefighters found the kitten, estimated to be about two or three uh, weeks old, not very old, in the middle of the road while battling the North Complex Fire in Northern California. This is back on September 20th. The kitten was recovered in smoke, or sorry, not recovered in smoke, covered in smoke and ash uh, <laughs> when he was taken to the Cal Oak Animal Shelter and examined by a vet- veterinarian. North Valley Animal Disaster Group said on Facebook, the group named her, of course, Baby Yoda. I don't know if I would have done that. I don't know exactly. You could say it looks like uh, Baby Yoda. If I adopt a cat, can I change its name? <laughs> yeah, is uh, that okay? Plus, there's no Baby Yoda. It's the child. Come oh, right. on, come right. on. Yeah, name it Child or something else. Yeah, see. Yeah, um, just I mean, it's he's poor thing. He's cute, but uh, cats cats ears go like that. You know, it's yeah. uh, <laughs> no, it's called a cat. His eyes aren't that big either. Like Baby Yoda's eyes are. Let's see, now I'm doing it. The child's eyes are big. Yeah, <laughs> that is funny that we have all decided Baby Yoda's the the term, but the show really has never is, once yeah. called it that. God no. Well, I mean, the Mandalorian probably maybe doesn't know who uh, Yoda is. No. So saying it looks like that'd be like, uh, you know, I mean, I guess it's like us saying Baby Winston Churchill. You know, like. Mm. <laughs> Oh look, it's a baby Winston Churchill. Was it is a baby Winston Churchill? Was it on this show or somewhere that you and I were talking? I think it was on here. We were talking about uh, why the Mandalorian Mandalorians in general don't seem to know much about Jedi goings on. They seem to be pretty dumb about it, and that surprises me because this is set what like five years after Return of the Jedi. Yeah, and I guess it's a big galaxy, and not everybody's on. You know, but I mean, you know, if there was a a big um, a big religion. Some people overthrew the empire, of, of which you are also fighting. <laughs> yeah, and you're you're your own kind of religion, right? Right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. It's a good point. There's some crossover, obviously, because that weird sword that uh, that uh, Gus Fring has now has right. some has something to do with some ancient Jedi stuff. But I dark don't know. saber. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know a lot about how that connects. I, <laughs> Gus Fring. <laughs> Gus. <laughs> and what's his real? What's his Darth? Uh, no. Oh, Darth Plagueis? No, not no, Darth no, Plagueis. No. What it's is Gideus? Gideon? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's not a right. He's a he's not a Darth. He's a Moff. Right? Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon. That's yeah. it. I knew it. He's the Chicken Lord of Southern. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Los dos Moffs hermanos. <laughs> he wants the child so he can make chicken out of it. Anyway, uh, as of last night. 
uh, the, her foster says she's doing great. So uh, Kat is already in a in a new family. Uh, North Valley Vice President Norm Rosine told CNN, Baby Yoda will have no problem finding a home, he says. With enormous ears, round eyes, and a little button nose, Baby Yoda looks like the Star Wars character and it's hard to resist. Uh, the Rosine said the group was flooded with requests from people requesting that they adopt her. But Baby Yoda is currently in the care of a medical foster care provider who is showering her with love and attention until she is ready to be, oh, to, to be properly adopted. So I guess her final home That's is still... Foster, right. Yeah. Her they'll, forever home. Scott. They'll just have a guy. Home. They'll have a guy in a helmet on a speeder take her somewhere. It'll be fine. <laughs> just keep her away from those uh, stormtroopers, uh, those scout troopers, man. Boy, those guys are dicks. Yeah, one of them wasn't one of them. Um, uh, Ted Lasso. Uh, Ed, Ed, Jason Sudeikis. Yeah, Sudeikis. That's who yeah. it is. Yeah. Sudeikis. Yeah. I keep hearing about this Ted Lasso. And I've seen a tiny bit of it. Why is everyone raving so hardcore about this Ted Lasso? I don't know, business? but it does look like it's pretty funny. I think I think I'm gonna break down and watch it. I didn't fall for the David Spade, the wrong Missy. I didn't fall for the <laughs> Will Ferrell Eurovision contest thing. Yeah. But I think I'm sucked in on the uh, Ted Lasso. I watched the one, the the one you mentioned in between there. Uh, the Eurovision? No, the meat in the sandwich. Uh, oh, the uh, the wrong Missy, David wrong Spade, Missy. wrong Missy. Yeah, there yeah. were things I liked about that movie. Is it is it just as good as it looks? Like, can you can look at that and say, yeah, that's about what I expected this to be. It's, and I can't tell if it's in on purpose. Probably it is, but it's it's a it's a movie like David Spade might have been in 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 the nineties. Oh, really? Okay. Like it's right. very much. Somebody said, hey, what if we made one of those dumb, stupid comedies that all these SNL guys were making? Like, not mm -hmm. not that... So, like, it looks like a Sandler thing without Sandler. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got what's-his-name in it that's always in Sandler movies. Uh, oh, uh, Rob. F Rob Pardo. Rob. You can do it. You, you can, can do it, You can Rob, do it. Yeah, uh, Rob, that guy. Uh, and he plays oh, my God. Rob Schneider. 2,000 episodes and I lost my mind. Isn't that Schneider? Schneider. Rob Schneider. Yes, Rob Schneider. He's the, his daughter's the one that sings about X's and O's. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rob Dangerfield. <laughs> Thanks, Tweet. Um, anyway, uh, there's your cat story is what I was getting at there. Right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right. So Ted Lasso. I think I'm, I think we're gonna do it. Yeah. We have two. Yeah. We have uh, two recommendals for tomorrow. Two movies instead of series that we watched. However, I will say because you've already recommended it, Tina and I started watching Raised by Wolves last night, and yeah. two episodes in, Tina's done. <laughs> She's out. <laughs> She's out. I think uh, you're gonna like it. I I will say this. I think it by the end. I'm not sure it knows what it wants to be yet. Um, really? I'm okay. not saying don't finish because I think it's, it's absolutely worth seeing through. Um, but okay. but all the stuff at the top where it's like weird and retro but modern at the same time and just like yeah. kind of all the craziness that happens, like yeah. that really captured me. I, I love 70s sci-fi made yeah. modern yeah. where you keep the 70s sci-fi yeah. look but you modernize it. Yeah, and, and, and like even some of the concepts are just so ripped the geodesic out dome pop up ball thing exactly the, uh, there's so yeah. much of that in it and i love that stuff and they maintain that tone pretty well but toward the tail end of it i just started to feel like well i'm not sure where you're going are you uh -huh. are you gonna go somewhere are you gonna finish this up like what are you gonna do and in the end i'm still okay with it even though i think it ended it's it's a little like that last season of westworld where i thought it started incredibly strong and then toward the end it just kind of didn't know what to do with itself it's a little like that Okay, but better All than right. the. Be, I will say I liked it better than the last season of Westworld. I will say that. Okay. Which All I, right. Which wow, I also, that, that which I also praise. recommend, just because you know it's sci-fi. You got to watch stuff. It's fine. <sighs> yeah. Well, turn over with sci-fi, Scott. I'm gonna <sighs> remind you. <laughs> yeah, but Stephen Lang was in that, and I might be recommending something this week with Stephen oh, Lang in it. Wow! Look at that! Look at that connection. Yeah, and it's um, all Film Sack's fault, by the way. Everything I did this week for my recommendals is all really. Film oh fault. yeah, that's true. I do know. Right, I do know one thing that you that you did wa yeah. uh, did watch. I went yeah, so I'm enjoying Dark. I've got. I'm about halfway through the second season. I switched over to. <laughs> Here's the thing: if you're fighting, if you're having a hard time falling asleep, this this works for me. I switched over from the dubbed dark to subtitle dark. Okay. Best best thing I ever did because watching that thing with subtitles and hearing their actual voices and their yeah, 
uh, attenuation and stuff like that is so much better. But when I'm lying down and I've got the iPad on my chest and I'm reading subtitles, yeah. I fall asleep like that. Oh man! <laughs> like it is, it is the best. <laughs> but unfortunately, it takes me like five nights to get through one one hour episode of Dark. That's uh, Brian Tonin. We'll call that. <laughs> it's Brian Tonin. Sub Tonin. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can do subtitles now that you say that because I actually really like. Uh, I think we talked about this. If we haven't, we should. This is an important issue. Yeah. I okay. have become a person that if you say, hey, do you want to go downstairs and go through the rigmarole of finding the remote, getting it on the big TV, making sure the sound thing's right, not on the wrong input, and just that's how you want to watch your movie? Or do I want to sit in a chair out on the back porch with an iPad Pro 12-inch screen and a pair of headphones, over-the-ear noise-isolating headphones, or maybe my, my Raycons or something, and just watch it that way. Mm -hmm. If nobody else is interested in watching what I'm watching, I'll do mm -hmm. the second thing almost every time. Totally. That's yeah, how I too. am now. That's just what I think of. Yeah. Like, if you said to me, hey, do oh, let's let's have a moment of silence for Dune being delayed a year. Good oh, Lord. Oh, I know. Boy, lots of lots of casualties today. Dune, the Batman, getting mm -hmm. pushed out. Yep. Glow and Teenage Bounty Hunters not getting renewed for another season on Netflix. Yeah. And, and Glow was, had already filmed one episode of season four. Yeah, and by all, this is the other thing is there's starting to be reports coming out saying that Netflix is canceling shows that are technically hits by their metrics. Like even if they did yeah, well, Glow was I'd say Glow was a hit. I'd say Glow was doing well. It did well, did well enough, but they mm -hmm. but they canceled it. It's weird. I don't know. They have a different way of doing things over there. It's really really odd. But but yeah. anyway, um, yeah, hearing that got delayed a year. I just um, uh, that's the only thing I cared about this year, movie wise. It's all I care. I about. know Dune. Not not even just like all right, we pushed it to May. Pushed it to. A year from almost a year from today, like October first, yeah, twenty twenty one. Yeah, October, and I, who knows if it'll even hit that? But I was really hoping they'd swing a deal, and I don't know why. I hoped against hope. It's too big for this, but it'd have been great if they said, "Hey, Max or freaking whoever, mm -hmm. Netflix, mm -hmm. how about we put it there and we'll charge people fifty bucks? I'd do fifty, fifty. I'd pay fifty. Wow. wow. I'd have the kids over. That's cheaper than going to the theater with all of them. Fifty. Boom. We got it. But my point is, even then. If nobody else in my house cared about Dune, I'd say, well, I'll watch it on my iPad with headphones. And that sounds dumb because mm -hmm. it seems like I'm saying I prefer this lo-fi thing, but I really like the intimate, like, there's this screen right here. I see mm -hmm. everything. I can rewind mm -hmm. and fast forward all I want. I've got my headphones on, so I've got great sound. Like, to me, yeah. it's the ultimate way for me to watch certain things. So I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe it's just I me. I think uh, I may try and see how... Um how much I like uh, dark on the Oculus, like watching it on the Netflix app on the Oculus without any other direct uh, distractions or anything like that. Just basically just right there. If they change the name of that to Facebook VR and drop the Oculus name, oh. will it annoy you? Cause it'll annoy it'll, me. It'll annoy me. Yes. I already don't like that. They're going to make people use their Facebook to log into that thing. Yeah, I know. It's the best thing on the market right now. And they're doing I their just Facebook played shit. Boxing VR. Like that? <laughs> Thumbs up. Did you like it? How about a conspiracy theory? You want to talk about flat earth theory here? <laughs> Hate it. Uh, uh, all right. Moving on. A uh, police. Yeah. Uh, there was a police breakup. Uh, they, they broke up a cult or maybe some are calling activist gathering. Uh, check this out. Richmond's. Is this, I guess Richmond, Virginia. Richmond's point. Molate, mole. Anyway, Molate probably in it Richmond. The, it was the scene of some uh, type of cult gathering over the weekend at about 9:30 p.m. on Friday. Richmond police responded to uh, the area upon reports that an Antifa gathering was there. Officers directed a group of 50, uh, sorry, 50 people dressed in black attire to leave uh, due to them trespassing on the city of Richmond proper. According to the RPD captain Al Whale Wall. The group who had arrived via party bus broke up with that incident and they took off. Several hours later, though, is where it gets weird. Are you sure it's not a Pokemon raid? Well, it's gonna it's worse than that. Okay, all right. Go well, ahead. you think Sorry. Pokemon raids are bad. Wait till you hear what happened. <laughs> okay. Uh, a group of 60 people were detained inside of a dock building. However, it was not Antifa. Honestly, Antifa's... Whatever, I don't want to get emails. Um gathering but rather some type of cult gathering he says the group was listening to recordings about climate change and mother earth while assembling around a four-foot model of a vagina 
<laughs> vagina, Brian, a vagina. Oh, is it? Uh, does it smell like Gwyneth Paltrow's candle? <laughs> I don't know. Let me see. Oh, it's over there. Can't smell. Four foot. Here. Okay, this is a tiny little like. <laughs> it's a little tiny vagina. There are people. There are people in the second row who can't see it because <laughs> there are people in the front row. Like. <laughs> Did somebody draw this on a napkin and accidentally put uh, the wrong the wrong marks on it, the wrong numbers? I love it. People in the back going, I can't sit down. I can't, I can't see, see it. see the four-foot vagina. Uh, it says here, uh, whoops, I, I skipped ahead and I didn't mean to. Uh, oh, what happened to it? Oh, oh here no. it is. Okay. I skipped another story. Uh, here it yeah, is. We it says, sure um, get to that story tomorrow. Yeah, that's totally fine. It says, at this time, it is not known what group or groups were affected or affiliated with the Point Mole gatherings and no arrests have been made. It appears the event was well organized and the group may have had props and accessories previously staged. Uh, let's see, the incident is still under investigation, they're quoted as saying, and the detectives will look further into the group's actions, intentions, and possible targets within the city of Richmond, Virginia. Prior to this past week's gatherings, the Point Mole shoreline, located near Richford San Rafael Bridge, Richmond, where is this? Is this in California or in Virginia? I keep adding the Virginia, but I don't actually know. I think it's Virginia, the Richmond Standard. Maybe they thought that was a small model of a Virginia. I mean, Richmond not a does sound like a. Um... Maybe they call vagi vaginas Virginias. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Um, it's interesting. The Richmond Standard is funded by the Chevron Products Company. What? Chevron? What? Like the yeah. oil, gas and yeah. oil people? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. This is Richmond in. Um, I thought, because they don't have an about, right? So it's like, all right, I'm going to go to community events and we'll see where these events are located so that, uh, you know, we can we can maybe look at it from there. Uh, there are no events scheduled for any months oh, ever. Okay, so it's just not... Not even the the uh, people, a lot of people are saying California. Okay, so let's say it's California. All right, it's fine. It's California. So they were having a, they were having a vagina party and the cops came and it's <laughs> bad news for everybody. President came by and grabbed it. <laughs> well, they let you do, and you're famous. All right, that's right. They'll let you do that. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to uh, a break. We're <laughs> going to play a song, and when we come back, we'll spend some time with our good pal Justin Robert Young. We'll talk about the pending debate tomorrow. Also, what this last week was really something. I want to find out his take on all that and more when we get political with Justin Robert Young. But first, a song. Right. Brian brought it. Yeah. It? Green chili, a red chili, a bird's eye chili, a habanero chili, and a Carolina Lupa chili in some chili oil. What the slippery f are you doing in my office at 8 a.m. on a Wednesday morning? <laughs> This is the morning stream. Shut up, baby. I know it. Oh, my gosh. I loved that. <laughs> is that great or what? Yes, yeah. It's so good. Tell me the name and the stuff again. Sure. The, uh, the singer is Annie. Uh, the upcoming album is called Dark Hearts, and that song was called The Streets Where I Belong. And somebody... Uh, who was it? It was Codes from Home. Just reminded me that I'm familiar with Annie. There's a song that she does called Chewing Gum that I totally is like the most earwormy, awesome pop song ever. And I uh, completely didn't realize that that was the same Annie. Of course, it's the same Annie. Well, it's, love that song. it's real good. That's so my jam. I loved it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Man, every once in a while on the show, we get a song that just puts me. I'll be down. I'll be down that highway all day. Like I'm gonna, <laughs> good all right well to that check out her over. album uh, animal from uh 2000 wow 2004 that thing is this is 16 oh, it's years been older. a while has it any animal animal album it's a hard out name it's been a while album, all right let's do this say. these are their stories do, 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 do. oh i'm terrible with names check it out you guys it's justin robert young our favorite tuesday guest nay our only tuesday guest <laughs> that's right comes on tuesday yeah, i vanquished them all <laughs> That's right. One by one, they've slowly dropped. They and moved all days. fall to my takes. <laughs> That's right. Your hot takes. Uh, today will be no different. In fact, today may be hotter than ever because what a what a weird week. We're going to talk about politics. That's what we do with Justin. And, uh, of course, we will spend uh, – we should spend some time uh, promoting your new season of 
uh, Raise the Dead because it is yeah. fantastic. It's real let's good. Pr- let's 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 promote that first before everybody gets mad at me. For all right, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Tell me all about season two. Why should people listen? I already know why, but why should other people listen? Uh, well, number one, if you're unaware of the premise, Raise the Dead is a, a political history series that largely charts presidential history. Uh, we did ni- the 1960 presidential election uh, between Kennedy and Nixon, and the sequel to that uh, is uh, Johnson and Goldwater because Kennedy gets shot and killed, and that is what our first episode is all about. In in my opinion, I, I get kind of frustrated when we have the conversations that we have about the Kennedy assassination because we focus on very, very specific conversations we had after they happened. Yeah. We don't really talk a lot about where Kennedy was in his standing before he got killed. Uh, uh, what people thought about immediately. Like the, w- when, when the news first broke and Walter Cronkite is telling the nation, uh, people didn't stand up from their easy chairs and say the CIA. Right. <laughs> but like, that's the one thing that we know today. Right. right. That's, that's what we, we talk about the mafia, the CIA, you know, sure. all these other kind of conspiracy elements of it. And as it so happens, uh, I swear to God, this was the, the release date set in stone for months. But, uh, we now know we have a little bit more context on on what it's like to have the mortal uh the mortality of the president in in jeopardy and sure. this this uh first episode is an example of uh how it played out in 1964 and then obviously because kennedy dies what happens when the biggest power vacuum in american political history opens up who seizes it and how do they do it yeah it's an interesting process and i you know i can see all the documentaries in the world but it's um your your breakdown is a it's a much more personal sort of on the ground uh view mm-hmm. of things that i wasn't quite expecting i like season one a lot so i thought well this would be as good as season one i really like season two like a lot it's great and by the way, your music is insane in that thing. I don't know where where you got that. Who, who oh, did? that is uh, original score. We dabbled with original score uh, wow. on uh, on on season two. The uh, the great Carson Pace, who is a like an actual rock star. He's mm. like my own little like Trent Reznor. He just is like <laughs> he has a, an amazing metal band called the Callous Dow Boys. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, go get their most recent record uh die on mars and uh they're working on a new one that i've heard awesome stuff from but uh we were just going back and forth and he had actually he was a big fan of the first season and uh i was like all right hot shot well why don't you i i need there's there's a breakdown at the very beginning of the first episode where i you know the the, the raise the dead theme that i've had through the entire series is jaunty it's mm. a little like it's like a and it's like I if I'm gonna begin the season with Kennedy getting shot, yeah. Um, spoiler <laughs> alert, like I can't just have it then go into like kind of yes, that's the wrong tone, yeah. Exactly. So I knew I needed a I needed an evil version of the theme. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it so works. I went to Carson and I'm like, I need an evil version of the theme and what he wound up giving me like unless you're really listening to it like you i don't know if you'd be able to pick out that it is an evil version of the theme but it's perfect yeah it's just it's yeah, he just nailed great it. as he nailed it's so, very good he's uh he's great and it sounds just like the yeah. way david fincher and Tresner, uh, trent Reznor got together same deal same story yeah so it's it's exactly, exactly the, the same, same thing you is are he, the is carson pace old enough to drink yet i remember meeting him at <laughs> dragon con years ago and he he gave me some music for TMS, some music for Coverville, yeah. and uh, he was like fourteen or something at the time. Yeah. Oh no, he's he is a a a, a prodigy. You know, he was doing stuff. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, he was doing stuff when he was just a kid for Night Attack, and uh, he uh, uh, I, I can't can't even say enough that the new stuff they're working on is uh, is just out of this world well, that's out of this world cool. very very Everybody, cool yeah. yeah that's awesome well uh well done on it people should check it out go to uh, uh the website and by the, the way i also hear one more note on that and i actually was just talking to him about this yesterday but all of his original score we are going to put up as the season two soundtrack 
uh, that'll be available to stream uh, as the season kind of wraps up. So oh, very nice. You you will you will have heard all of his all of his stuff, and you can just put it on in the background. It's all instrumental stuff, so uh, it'll be uh, it'll be great. Nice. Well, cool. get your history on, you guys, and uh, check out raise the dead podcast.com correct as podcast yeah raise the dead podcast it's available everywhere that you uh that you get your podcasts and uh please spread the word you know this is uh three episodes shorter season we're gonna do a mailbag episode at the end like we did for the first season and uh the audiobook should hopefully be available soon it was mastered this time <laughs> before i submitted it so hopefully it will not be delayed that much longer well, you never know with that setup. It's always tricky with those audiobooks. But anyway, good luck on that. It's going to be great. Uh, let's yeah. dive in. So, um, you know, it's funny. You were talking about the, the Kennedy thing and the nation being faced with the mortality of their president. The only the time I always think of in my lifetime, and I was pretty young at the time, yeah. but I remember the overall feeling of when uh, Reagan was shot and this yeah. feeling of like, oh, my gosh, him and like all these other higher ups. Uh, taking bullets today what does that actually mean like I was I didn't know I didn't know what that meant and didn't really fully grasp like how does the succession work and who go I, I figured the vice president was there but then what happens after that if he's part of the shooting like then what and I remember going down yeah. like kind of a spiral as a kid and the difference then I think versus now which has its own 40 layers of weirdness uh, the last three or four days have so forgetting about those for just a second um, back then the difference was, or at least it felt this way, everybody I knew in, in my vicinity, whether it was at school, fellow students, parents, relatives all around the country, was that for the most part, even my Democratic, even Democratic people in my life, uh, hailing from that side of the, of the aisle, generally liked Reagan. Like Reagan wasn't, wasn't like horribly despised or whatever by a lot of people there are a lot of disagreements and blah, blah blah that's all you know and a lot of it's in retrospect now that people have issues with reagan's economics and other stuff but at the time he was well liked and so like kennedy there was a general feeling that this was a well-liked guy even though it's you know not true there's plenty of people that didn't like him i mean he got shot and killed for one thing <laughs> So there are obviously people that do not like these men when they're in their power and hopefully eventually women and hopefully they like them more. I'm not trying to make any insinuations there. My oh point my is, God, Scott, geez, you want a shovel? Yeah, you want to keep digging? Shovel. Give me a shovel. <laughs> give me a shovel. This hole's not deep enough. Anyway, uh, so this thing, though, uh, that we've dealt with the last week or so has been just a mix of some people getting like full on Jesus complex on one end of this thing and then others just wishing for the president's death mm. and a lot of in between and again not a surprise is what we always get but it does feel a lot different than the reagan thing and i was a lot younger so i can't really compare it my parents would tell me about when they heard kennedy was shot and that was a big sobering moment for all of them in their generation um this feels different and obviously he's not dead uh so it's 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 different than the kennedy thing but it's not unlike the reagan thing it feels like maybe uh you know, he 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 got it, but he's not he's not going to die yet. So I don't know what that means, but my, I guess what I'm saying to you is, I would love to get your overall on just all of this. And does it affect things like upcoming debates, which he says he's not going to pull away from? But but does it actually yeah. affect those? Does it change anything about the vice presidential one tomorrow night here in Salt Lake City? Does it make it more significant because Pence represents? <laughs> that next line of, of power, you know, he's the Lyndon I know. Johnson. All right, can scenario. I answer one of the 50 <laughs> questions you've given me so I'm just far? Keep I, going. I'm having a trouble remembering all of them. I'm just going to keep going. No, I don't actually don't even remember asking the first question. But all right, do. well, here, hold on. Here's the first question. Uh, 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 you mentioned, you know, when you were a kid and Reagan was shot, that there was a sense that Reagan was not all that unpopular. And I would say that when you were a kid growing up in Salt Lake City, I'm positive that that's probably true because in Salt Lake City, uh, uh, Ronald Reagan was probably, you know, much like the rest of the country, considering he won the massive blowout in 1984, uh, was, was somebody that was fairly well respected across many party lines. Now, that was right. not true everywhere. Right. There were places where Ronald Reagan was very unpopular, even in his time. And I would say that one of the the miracles of our modern age is that we 
have places in which we spend our time that are not physical. And I think we need to recognize that when we look at the cacophony of what happens on social media, we need to understand that more as a physical place and less like an X-ray into humanity. Now, in reality, it's probably somewhere in between, but the idea that we got you know, that, that, uh, there was a, especially on Friday night, you know, when the president gets airlifted to, um, Walter Reed. airlifted to Walter Reed and, and we don't know, I mean, considering his age and weight, that's not a great recipe considering what we know for COVID. Uh, uh that is something where, you know, it'd probably be best if people kind of like waited and see, but that didn't happen. We had people either, like you said, uh, uh, heralding, you know, uh, uh, the great man or uh, wishing death on somebody that they loathe. Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily the great the greatest look in the world. But again, uh, these are unprecedented times. We're in the final month of an election, a very hotly contested election in a time where we've never been more politically engaged and we've uh, never really been more polarized. So in a lot of ways, it doesn't particularly surprise me. Uh, but it is, uh, there were times where I had to kind of just turn away from, from Twitter and Facebook, like just because it, on it was, it was, it was not a scene that made me feel happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a rough, it was a rough week. I mean, even, even during a week where I had made a pretty concerted effort to stay away from it, it was just impossible at that point. People that never talk yeah. about this stuff. We're talking about it because, again, it's like you said, an unprecedented, unprecedented moment in unprecedented times, and it's happening in real time. So, people like I don't know nerds I follow because all they talk about is comic books. We're suddenly talking about COVID being spread at the White House, president being airlifted, um, whether he's you know his condition got worse or his oxygen dropped. Like everybody was talking about it, and there was no way to avoid it without just straight up avoiding it. Because you can't block well, everybody, you can't mute everyone. You know what I mean? Like, but that, but that's the thing is like, in a lot of ways, that's how we're supposed to use this, right? Right. Like, you know, cats can have a little salami as a treat. <laughs> like, we, we we we've 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 come to imagine that social media is really our entire lives, and I am on it quite a bit. But at the same time, it's not there all. The, it's not there for every day, every moment. Like, it is not the truth. It is not the 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 most pure conversation. Now, we can have a larger meta conversation about what is it a purer conversation than you just walking down the street and talking to somebody? Maybe I don't know. I'm probably more open to that. But uh, at the same time, boy, is it a very pointed place, and uh, uh, the 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 bubble that you have selected for yourself is going to reinforce things that either make you feel good about your life or make you feel queasy. Yeah, yeah, I. I had to I had to back away from it some, but also there was this just this feeling of like this is what makes it different than than the Kennedy thing for me or even the Reagan thing. Not everybody was shot, but they're all possibly exposed to an invisible thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? The well, thing I mean, to to be fair, people keep yeah. saying Reagan, and I think Reagan is a bad example. I think this is probably closer to George Bush swallowing a pretzel and hitting his head and almost dying. Like, <laughs> oh, I that, forgot about that. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah that no that is probably closer, unless he dies. Right. right. The reason why I I I you know I'm using the 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 Kennedy thing is, and this is something that's even talked about in that episode, uh, is like. For as much as Trump is loathed, if Trump dies, you're going to think about him differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you never love him, even if you never think that he's a great guy, even if you will forever list his crimes, you will think differently about him. Or at least history would suggest you will think this uh, differently about him. Mm -hmm. um, now, that uh, I'm not suggesting that you should do that now. I I'm just saying that that's what happens when public figures go away. It goes from uh, a political lens to a human lens. Everybody wants, every peasant wants to storm the castle and kill the king. 
But when you have your pitchfork up against the king's trembling throat and he looks like a 90 year old man who just pooped himself, it starts to look a little bit more like murdering an old man than the righteous <laughs> quest. Right. right. Um, and and that's that's that, that that's all I, I, I wanted to just kind of suggest if, if, if we are going to look at our past as prologue. Right. I guess uh, I mean, from a from a personal standpoint, uh, what I had hoped this would would have been was like oh cautionary tale um even at the highest levels with the most buffer uh you can have stuff can get in um mm -hmm. that like it's just a different it's not like the secret surface keep keeping alex crazies or, or shooters or whatever it's a yeah it's a different kind of problem and so i'd really hoped it would have served and it seemed like maybe in the early hours it might would have served to be like this lesson of oh well okay and even Look how some, fast it can spread among you know a, a small group of people and, right and even trump yeah. trump's t tweets and some of his statements seem to be in that vein of like wow his vlog his vlog on saturday was the most universally praised thing that i had seen him do well, like this entire this entire the whole administration term. yeah like so there like was that was like, like, oh, look, he vlogged. Right. I liked his vlog. <laughs> like, please, where, where can I subscribe to this vlog? <laughs> but then there was like right after that. And some some have argued that it's some of this medication has some pretty wha that he's being that he's been given in an interesting cocktail has uh, some side effects like massive mood swings and other stuff. And so then he went on this like 20 tweet rampage of all caps. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, things and this so, was yesterday morning Saturday, yesterday yeah. morning yeah was yesterday he, morning or sunday morning i believe it was yesterday morning as yesterday, he was okay. about to get out of the uh about to oh, be discharged right. yes okay yeah and uh it was it was uh i'd like to read it like a deaf poetry jam reading <laughs> where it's like low taxes yeah. vote vote <laughs> it was just every it was like everything and then vote it was, yeah. it was like well, but you, Whoa, strongest, man. strongest military <laughs> vote <laughs> and i got a little bass player in the background a little hat down low bom, cigarette bom, bom, little bongos bom, yeah bom, bom. i can totally see that um but yeah like it was a it was quite the the thing and then you know him showing up on the balcony and tearing that mask off and looking all triumphant and saying things that probably are dangerous to say from my own personal standpoint, I went, well, okay, there goes that lesson. Or especially when he's out driving around with <laughs> for the freaking photo op with the, with oh, the yeah. other drivers, yeah, the like that service, stuff made uh, me go, Oh, I guess we're not, we're not going to, this message isn't going to probably change. In fact, if anything, it's going to now right. turn to look at a 75 year old man triumphed. It's not nearly as bad as we all thought it was. And, and we're going to have that. That's fight. so the, 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 the crazy thing about it, is that like the people that I've heard take that lesson are mostly people that are that don't like it. Like it, it just so speaks to our dual reality that, you know, uh, him doing the loop around the 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 hospital on the right was looked at as like on the morbid side. Hey, what if he doesn't have much longer to live and he wants to say thank you to the people that were there with him or on the other side, like, oh, that irascible scamp. He can't get out of the hospital, but he makes uh, he, he makes sure that he shows love to people by giving them a little treat or something. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas on the left, it was like a final proof that we don't need to feel bad because he's not taking it seriously. Look, I bet you he coughed right in his secret serviceman's <laughs> face when he got in. Um, and then on the other side with like the big, the controversial line is uh, don't be afraid of COVID. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is something that you can either and I think both, right? This is being interpreted actively as either uh, this is not as bad as anybody thinks. And of course, I told you it was a hoax and I got it and it was easy to 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 get through. So of course you shouldn't care. Everybody should go back to doing exactly what they are doing and masks are BS and blah, blah, blah. Or... It is a on uh, to, to his supporters. It is a Churchillian keep calm and carry on. You don't mm -hmm. need to fear that this is you have nothing to fear, but fear itself. Yes, of course, 
We are, uh, uh, we, we face danger in our lives, but it is the fear that will do us worse. Like, yeah. uh, when, and and when actually that whole statement was probably I'm just going to go out on a limb here that was probably just look nobody nobody on either side of this chasm of pol politics these days can tell me straight faced that he's not a narcissistic guy thinks a lot about himself talks about himself inserts himself every well, conversation's yeah. about himself so I think that whole statement about don't be afraid of it was him going bah it's no big deal I went to Walter Reed one of the greatest hospitals in the world. And for 750 bucks in taxes, I got the best health care the world could provide <laughs> for a whole weekend and a bunch of experimental drugs that none of you can have yet, but I'm going to have them. And man, I feel better than I did 20 years ago. Like it, that was just another one of those. But that's the problem. He says one of those. And then both sides in all extremes get to take it and interpret it all day long to be whatever they want it to be. But really, he was just saying, man, don't be afraid of it. I got it. And I'm fine. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Like that's what that was. So mm -hmm. it's fine. Like if he's going to do that and then we get, and then our job is to go, what does he mean? Well, I think he meant this. No, I think he meant that. I think it's a brave moment in American history. I think it's, the I mean, most we're, 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 we're a month away from the election. That's the yeah. key. Yeah. The key is, is like, normally this is where I would, I would say, Hey, why are we getting all worked up about it? But now is the time to get worked up about it. Yeah, like now so. is the time when people are actually voting. If you're voting uh, by mail or absentee, uh, or early voting. So this is when you want to throw every strand of spaghetti up against the wall to see which one wriggles down to the floor and which one sticks. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, you want to know what? Normally I I, I poo-poo this kind of political barbarism, but uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm here for it. Go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Swing your maces. Charge. Flails of flailing into the fray, <laughs> into the breach. Yeah. Make sure that there is nothing but hair and flesh on your weapons by the time that November 3rd rolls around, because only then will you be able to say that you did your best, win or lose. Aren't we, uh, we're what, 20... Is it 28 days? 29 days. 29 days. 29 days away, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I actually have a question uh, that you may be able to answer for me, or maybe not. I don't sure. know. Maybe it won't matter to you, but um, I'm tempted. I can vote early. We do mail-in voting here in Utah and have for a decade or whatever it's been, or 15 years, and it's always been fine. But I always I have a, this tradition. I like to go vote in person at the precinct. I know people that work yeah. there like to say hi. Kim and I mm -hmm. just do that. That's what we do, and it's not... It's not inconvenient. It's just up the road. It's never crazy, whatever. Um, but for whatever reason, I got this little voice in the back of my head saying, do it early and don't do it in person. And I don't know why I'm having that in my head. It's not a COVID reason, by the way. I have no problem putting on a mask, going in there, touching three buttons, and then washing my hands on the way out. Like, I don't have a problem yeah. with that. Yeah. It's just... Why do I feel like I want to do this early? I don't know. Is that just me buying into the paranoia of the mail's effed up and, the, you know, shit's not going to get counted or I don't know. I'm on your. I look, mean, but I'm, why? But why? If you're worried about the paranoia that the mail screwed up, then why would you want to use the mail for your vote? Well, that's my point, because in my head, in my head, I'm paranoid for the first time ever. I feel like, well, what if something is effed up with the counting? On day on day of, but also what if it's effed up on the pre? Like why are you why are you delegitimizing elections, Scott? Why are you using <laughs> your platform to delegitimize elections? Well, see, it's because I everybody a, cancel Scott. He's delegitimized. This guy's delegitimizing the le the election you guys over see here. It? You see it? <laughs> we have Johnson here. Nobody cares. That's from that movie, isn't it? Uh, from the address. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah. Uh, my point is though, I do think it's because all of that talk has an effect. It has an effect on people. And well, I'm here, here's all right. So, so here's here's what you should do. Uh, look up. I don't I don't know offhand the local laws in Utah, uh, but I would look up whether or not they are able to count mail ballots early, or if they have to wait until the day of to count mail ballots, or even early voting ballots. Um, if they don't count early voting uh, early voting ballots early in your state and they have to wait until election day anyway, mm -hmm. then I would say you might as well vote day of. If they can, then at least you could probably, I mean, a lot of states like California has ballot tracking. So you can like check online to see where in which like state of it, your, your ballot is being handled for as much as you trust the same uh, 
kind of system that lets me know that my pizza is being made by Domino's on their pizza <laughs> tracker. Um, but uh, uh, I, I would say look that up. And if they do count it early, then yeah, if you just want to get it done to get it done and, and uh, possibly have that other level of assurance, then that's good. Otherwise, uh, I, I would just say vote uh, a day of. So either mail or early, check to see if they count. If uh, they don't, then uh, I would say voting, then it doesn't really matter. Just vote on the day. I think part of this mentality is coming from, um, <laughs> it can totally relate to this, I think, because we talk about it sometimes, mm -hmm. but this idea of I need to have a backup drive of mm -hmm. everything. So I'm always worried <laughs> about files getting lost. This show right now is being recorded twice because I don't trust yeah. just one. Uh, if something goes bad, I need to have a backup plan. But in voting, you can't do that. I can't vote by mail and then go vote in person just to make sure they got it. That's two votes. Yeah. Literally illegal. You yeah. can't That's do it. That's a felony. Yeah, it's a felony. So, <laughs> yeah. we know. so it's this, but it is that feeling of this. My like, God, after you've already been canceled this segment, to get canceled again for suggesting that you vote twice. Disgusting. <laughs> Uh, but I think that's what it is. I want, I'd like to have a plan and I'd like to have a backup and this is not affording me one because I've let just a little bit of that paranoia seep into my head about how things are counted and how it'll work. And, and I, and I think that was the point of that, to all of all of that talk. And I, and I bit that worm a little bit. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. I am leaning toward. Yeah. Look it up. Look, 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 look up, um, look up what the, uh, what, what, what the thing is. Do you have uh, any like big local Utah stuff that you guys are voting on? Not anything that's like big fruit that's low hanging, but like just a lot. We have gubernatorial dude, new governor this year. Um, new governor. Yeah. Herbert's up, stepping down and we're getting probably his lieutenant governor is going to win just because he has a ton of support here. He's OK. He's a tech tech guy. And I like tech guys when they're in charge of stuff for some reason. I don't know why. That's yeah. A false sense of security. But anyway, um, not really. We don't have like any big pending like uh, what do they call um not motions, um, uh, propositions. Propositions. We don't have any big propositions this year, as far as I know. The big one last time was the medical marijuana thing, which passed. And so I may not have. Y'all got y'all got weed now. Oh, we got the we got the medical weed big time now. Medical weed. Yeah, but you gotta. Have so a wait, card. how easy is it? Can you just like go into a Seven Eleven and say I need my weed card, <laughs> no. and they just like <laughs> sling it on over like an old West bartender? They're uh, they're dedicated dispensaries. <laughs> I don't know how other states do this that have medical or, uh, or even recreation. California level. used to have to get a license. Yeah, it's so like you'd that. have to go to. A, <laughs> You'd have to go to a dude who looked like the he used to sell you Stacker 2 uh, a late night on uh, Comedy Central. And he's like a guy in a lab coat, but it's yoked out for some reason. And he's like, uh, what's your problem? And it's like, I got a headache. And he's like, I got just the cure. And they play Van Halen and they would like he would scribble down in crayon on a piece of paper and then you'd be able to go buy weed. Well, my understanding is at I'm, least that's what my that's what my mom. Told me. Well, yeah, I have a I have a listener. Uh, no, no, for sure. <laughs> I have a listener of the show, also a close friend. Um, his name is Josh. He is a uh, pharma uh, pharmacist who now works for one of the state dispensaries. And my understanding is, from what I've heard from him and those around him, it works like this. You go to the doctor. Doctor says, oh, we're, we're going to prescribe HTC, blah, 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 whatever they're going to do for you. And then yeah. you get a HTC. They're gonna you know, exactly no Samsung. no Samsung, no Samsung, no Samsung, only HTC, <laughs> only Vive, no Oculus. Okay, get it straight. <laughs> I always do that. What is it? THC, THC, THC. You know TLC, the channel that brought you yeah. a little piece. Exactly. Right. Well, it's only TC now. All right. <laughs> Uh, ten tender care. <laughs> anyway, so you take that, you take it to this dispensary, and then they have a very re not regulated, but very closely watchdogged operation there. According to him, like really heavily big shock. Salt Lake City, Utah. We have a very carefully regulated uh, medical yeah. marijuana plan after that thing passed. But yeah, apparently you can just go in there and you know get your thing. If your doctor says you need it, you get it, and you're good. That's a huge step forward. So maybe I've missed it, and this year they're really pushing for recreational or less stringent standards on the medical i don't know i would i would guess that utah will take their victory on uh on on weed for the next few years yeah. before they start going uh I tend like to agree. uh I, I think it'd be smart for the marijuana advocates in utah to give it a couple of years <laughs> and not just immediately validate any slippery slope arguments about uh how pervasive it's going to be in the state yeah I tend, uh, I tend to agree. But beyond that, though, there's not, as far as I know, there's not. So to answer your original question, I don't think there's anything huge locally or statewide that I'm 
super concerned about. Although I have people I like and people I don't, um, that are running for various things like our local, um, uh, what do you call them? There's like a local, um, what are, I want to say it's like comptroller, but what is it? Your local councilman. Councilman. There's a councilman thing going on, <laughs> and there's somebody I know personally and really like, and think he'll do a great job, and and so I'll vote for that. You know, so there's a lot of that going on, but mostly this is you know it's presidential. I yeah, I know. I know, Brian. You got a big Senate race, right? We do. Jeez, got- Hickenlooper and uh, Cory Gardner, who who voted nine times to. Uh, uh, oh, are you getting <laughs> eliminate ads- protections? Yeah, tons of it, you know, and and even with even with the stuff we stream, they still have ways of wedging that stuff in there. So you still you still. Oh, my God. Tom Steyer actually got me to buy Hulu without ads like it was it was Tom Steyer. (laughs) Nice, nice, uh, you know. Yeah, seemingly unrelated connection, but it totally works. Oh, yeah. no, he was he was just like every time I'm trying to watch, you know, Atlanta and like every commercial is just the withering voice of Tom Steyer saying Donald Trump is a fraud and a failure. And I'm like, stop yelling at me. Yeah. yeah. So I wound up getting uh, I wound up getting it without ads. Uh, yeah. Here in, in California, we got the big uh, we got the big Uber, the Uber proposition. Oh, yeah. Ooh, this could this could like affect nationwide in fact uh, i don't know if this has been uh, mentioned anywhere but but you can ask uh, tom about this tomorrow mm. there will be a uh co-production from daily tech news show and politics 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 Ooh. about that prop uh next tuesday a week from oh, today cool. oh, that's great um that'll go in both the uh, both the feeds so it'll be uh, on the on the 13th but talking all about prop 22 and what it means not only for california and i know plenty of you guys are who live in california will obviously want to be more aware of this if you're not already but also uh the fact that this could be something that would go national the idea of gig work could be redefined uh forever and one of the major stepping stones could be this uh this November here in California. Is it heavily contested? Is there a lot of, you know, both sides going, yeah, we got all oh, the yeah. support we need. 50, 50. Let's so, do this. Well, um, you know, in California, it's very weird just because like the props are it. They're very confusing. Like, I wish that they would be able to just name the things instead of just calling them prop 22, mm-hmm. just have yeah, the question right. be the thing. Cause it's like now, the mail that I so get many, is just like, yeah. There'd be, it, there'd be so many arguments as to what to call it that's not like making it lean towards one side or the other, you know? Oh uh, yeah, it's just like it's like well, like prop, uh, prop twenty five. Save the babies. Yeah, I'm like I'm like like prop twenty five means yes for kidneys, and I'm like I thought that was the Uber one. It's like prop eighteen says uh, don't go to jail, and I'm like wait a minute, wait wasn't that the one about that we should all use salad forks? Like I don't know what the hell is going on well, here. Sometimes sometimes but, they they take yeah. on levels of like memory that that keep it in the minds of people forever. Like prop eight will always be everyone knows prop eight was oh, the no, anti gay thing. Right. No hate, yeah. So, yeah. so that was an easy one to just lock in for whatever reason. It's like but, you got to retire it like a jersey number, right? You well, can't and, have and they, another exactly. You had him another famous prop eight, <laughs> although they wound up losing the prop eight one, right? Yeah, yeah. They oh, did. yeah, right. Yeah, but, because but became, people thought it was like yes on gay marriage, so yes on eight, but they had to rebrand that as no on hate mm-hmm. with the eight. Yep. Uh, That's but, right. Jeez. Yeah, no, that was that was a crazy one. But I mean, to to answer your question. Uh, the the biggest ad spend is on behalf, unsurprisingly, of uh, Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash, uh, and Instacart, who are putting the money behind this uh, this uh, uh, gig thing. Which we'll, we'll we'll talk about it in that in that special. But it's a it's a it's a complicated path of very 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 California issues up to and including uh, uh, reckless and aggressive. Uh, Silicon Valley companies running headlong into uh, overly activist state politicians. Uh, fun. Well, your work is cut out for you. Did you remember the simple days in Florida where it was just like, hey, do we want a high, we want better hurricane standards for buildings that are on the like, no, I don't know what you No, Florida's do. Florida's <laughs> Florida's forever prop was the was the high speed rail. 
Oh, they kept yeah. they kept talking about and this was like every year that I can remember as a kid one of the big things was whether or not it was a good idea to build a massive railroad from South Florida to Tallahassee basically to the state capital right and so it would like run all the way up through and uh like I think they passed it once and then they just realized that you can't pass it and then start pricing out the land because as soon as everybody who owns the land knows that you have infinite state money then the land becomes 80 percent of your budget yeah but uh yeah so they wound up building a fundamentally useless high-speed rail from uh to 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 take over the onerous hour and 15 minute drive from orlando to tampa yeah (laughs) yeah well that worked out well i'm glad your voice was heard that's the main thing i mean look my, the greatest state in the union. Sorry for party <laughs> rocking. Uh, you, Gary, you were right to hate Utah for Prop 8. We had too much weird involvement in that. Um, all right. Uh, well, this is all good. Uh, aside from, uh, of course, the fantastic new season of uh, Raising the Dead, what else should people be checking out this week from Justin Robert Young? Uh, well, you should always check out the Politics, Politics, Politics podcast. Not only, of course, uh, next week are we going to have uh, Tom Merritt, uh, uh, with our co-production for talking about Prop 22, but also, I'm important a ringer for PX3. Mm. Have you guys ever had Andrew Heaton on? No, hmm. no, but, um, I've, but I've but I've seen Andrew Heaton on uh, somewhere else. Your show, I think. Uh, maybe my show. Yeah, night attack. Uh, but uh, uh, he he and I he does another fantastic. A podcast called The Political Orphanage. I think you would actually really, really uh, like it, Scott. Uh, you should, you should really give it a try, especially this week. He's doing a whole thing. He's instead of Shark Week, he's doing Judge Week, uh, all about <laughs> just like judges, uh, uh, specifically considering this uh, Supreme Court stuff that's going on. But uh, uh, just a awesome, awesome uh, research and interviews. Uh, but we have made an alliance. And so the politics, politics, politics orphanage has has uh, come come to form, and indeed you will hear me on his podcast every week, and you will hear him on my podcast every week. We are going to be rocking and rolling through, uh, however long this election takes. Well, wow, uh, I love a good crossover episode. Me too. Exactly. Yeah, it's going to be like a crossover a month, crossover this season. Is, yeah. Yeah. This right. is like a, like like one of the like a, like a, like like Secret Wars or something like that. Like this is <laughs> ooh, speaking my language Ooh, speaking my language of the yeah. comic books. Well done. Now Brian is yeah. suddenly really into politics now because it sounds like Secret Wars. <laughs> Wait, this is going to be where's the who's the Beyonder in this? Yeah, one? <laughs> this is amazing. It's amazing. All right. Uh, well, Justin, it's always a pleasure. Good luck and congrats on the new season, and uh, we will see you next Tuesday here and all other places that we see you. Goodbye now. See ya. Oh, I forgot to do this. The jury will now retire. <laughs> I keep forgetting to do that. <laughs> I know. You know what? After the fact is fine, too. Yeah, it's Just, okay. He doesn't just... have to hear it. No, no. Hey, remember when we thought uh, having only one guest on Tuesdays meant it would go shorter? Remember that? That was a funny time. <laughs> I remember that, That was yeah. a funny time. That was silly. Silly, silly yes. ideas. Fan All right. service! Look at that. That file played whether I wanted to or not. Must be time for fan service. Got this from Neil, a.k.a. Headphones Neil, in the chat when he's there. I've seen him in there before. I have um, too. He says, "Howdy! I'd like to submit my YouTube channel for the TMS fan service segment. I'm currently in the middle of my replay of 2003's Knights of the Old Republic uh, for Android and Doom and Doom 2 scheduled for af- uh, to play after that. For those looking for a moment of Zen, minutes minute long videos of nature are recorded on my Android smartphone and uploaded in 4K. Wow! Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. The uh, channel is YouTube.com/slash Patel in O one. So P A T A." Sorry, P A T E L. Oh, no, I'm sorry. N O one. So P A T E L N zero one. N zero one. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and you can find the Knights of the Old Republic playlist over there, the Moments of Zen playlist, other cool stuff. Go check it out. Thank you very much, Neil. And if you've got your own cool project you're working on that you want us to talk about, let us know. I'm so. kind of cracking up at the thought of playing Knights of the Old Republic on on an Android, like on an Android phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Android or and iOS ta- versions Android are tablet actually, or? they're actually pretty yeah. good. They're not bad. Really? Okay. Yeah, they're not bad. The only okay, so the Knights of the Old Republic games had a lot of point and click aspects to them. Yeah. So oh right, yeah, I was for, thinking, for you know combat what? Good and that, point. for combat and stuff you could, but moving around the world was like a third person action game. So you're not wrong to wonder how that part is. 
I was visualizing more the old Republic RP, uh, MMORPG style thing, but that's right. And that's uh, KOTOR was, was, um, right. A little bit more point and click. Yeah. Sounds like I'm peeing. I'm not peeing. I'm pouring another cup of coffee. He's peeing you guys. Don't believe him. All right. He's I'm peeing. peeing. Fake news. Got fake my news. truckers, my TMS truckers buddy, which will be <laughs> soon available in the store. I thought you were using a stadium pal now. No, it's back to truck. No buddy? truckers buddy. I feel no. like it's got more volume. And, You're probably um, right. You're probably right. Still keeps your leg warm. That's you know, it's thing. also a little bit bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a free, free one, Jamie. All right, we're done with the show. Thank you for being here, everybody. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, you can support this show and its goings on over at patreon.com slash TMS. This week we'll have a PM edition of the show on Friday. You get that extra bonus show by being a patron and no other way. Patreon.com slash TMS. Uh, frogpants.com slash TMS for everything else. Let's leave with a song, I guess. Yeah, you got music. What are we playing? What are I we do. Doing? Of course I've got music. I got it in there, you know, after uh, the show started. No, but hey, I still no, got music. no pressure, though, to beat that song in the middle because that was rad. I don't know what this yeah, next thing good. is, but, man, you yeah. got your work cut out a for lot of A lot of pressure to beat that song in the middle, you mean. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, well, speaking of Neils, I, would, I don't know if this is the same Neil. I don't know. Uh, another fun song for our wedding anniversary. Let's make this year better than the last. Maybe we can take that trip to England that was supposed to happen in April. Love you, Momo, from your APA. There you go. That means oh. something to two people out yeah. there. Enjoy it, the rest of you. Sure. Uh, this uh, it says, uh, P.S., I know October 4th is our day, but that's a Sunday, and TMS doesn't happen on a Sunday. So, meh, close enough. <laughs> that's also apparently to Momo from APA. Oh, uh, Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, is that Avatar? That's an Avatar thing? Like Avatar Last Airbender Avatar thing? Oh, is it? Gotcha. Okay. okay. I didn't know that either. Because I've never I've never seen that show. So <gasps> I, mean, I, I need to. People tell me I need to, and I know I need to. You would love it. It's I'm great. sure I would. You really would. Sure. It's very, very good. Anyway. All right. All right. Uh, this is uh, a cover 